Hello and welcome to everybody on my YouTube channel Cloud Fitness. So today we are going to discuss about managed and unmanaged tables in Databricks. So before we move on to the topic today, do remember to subscribe to my channel and do let me know in the comment section if you want a video on some other topic. So let's go ahead and discuss about these tables. So typically at the broader level, we have two types of tables in Databricks, global table and local table. Uh, so in my previous video, I have created a temporary view uh, by using create or replace temp view. I have created a temporary view. What is that view? That view is actually a local table because it is accessible only in that session in which you create it. You cannot access it from another cluster. So that is called a local table. And similarly, when you talk about a global table, it is available across all the clusters. So if I am working on a cluster A, I create a global table B. So that global table B will be accessible to be to any other person who is working on some other cluster as well. So this is the typical difference between global table and the local table. Now, when you talk about managed and unmanaged tables, so these are type of global tables, right? And now I'll discuss in brief about the managed tables and unmanaged table and I'll create my both managed and unmanaged table and show how uh, you can create it. So when you talk about Spark, what happens is uh, whenever you create a table, automatically a metadata information about your table is actually stored. So if that metadata information has the schema and it also has the data. In uh, it, it also has the data. So when you talk about a managed table, so in that case, Spark manages the table. So this is in very layman term, I'm telling you, when you think about managed table, you just have to think that Spark is managing it. So Spark is managing the table. So and also Spark is managing the metadata. So Spark is managing both the things. Spark is managing the data and Spark is managing the metadata. And in case of metadata, in case you drop the table, now since Spark is managing the table, you are not managing the table, it automatically deletes both the metadata as well as the data of that table and everything is actually stored into your dbfs account only when you talk about the managed table right and now uh, coming on to the unmanaged table from the name itself just think that unmanaged table is not being controlled by databricks it's not being controlled by databricks it's not being controlled by spark so you are actually controlling that so you actually point, you actually control the location where the metadata will be stored for that, where the metadata for that table will be stored. You control that. So that is why it is called as an unmanaged table. So now when you delete the, or you drop the unmanaged table, what happens is Spark will only remove the metadata, but the data will still be present in the location that you have specified while creating the table. So you actually specify the metadata location while creating an unmanaged table. So until you go on and delete the files from that location, your data will still, will still be present. So this is the basic difference between managed and the unmanaged table. So now let's go ahead and see how do we do that. So I quickly zoom my screen a bit and see. Uh, you, if you check this command file, I am just fetching my username. Uh, I'm using so my all my notebooks have been typically in uh, Python only. So in case you try to use uh, any other language, you just have to use the magic command of percentage SQL in case you are trying to use SQL. So remember that point. Now let's run the command file. So in this command file, actually you can see the output is here Bhavna underscore Bedi. So that is the name that I'm trying to fetch out. What I'm trying to do here is I'm selecting the current user. So the current user is actually my email ID. Now from my email ID, I am collecting my name part and splitting it from at the rate and then I am replacing the dot with underscore. So now uh, using this, actually I am just trying to fetch my database username which I am trying to use. Now come, uh, going to command 6, I have a database name. So what I am trying to do, I am trying to create a DB. So uh, just to show you, all the tables will lie inside a database. So I am trying to create a database automatically here, not manually. 
So that is the reason you see all of these parameterization, everything being done here. So this DB name demo underscore train, right? So this is the prefix for my DB name. And then I have these curly braces and then uh, it ends with underscore DB and format string and I'm picking up the database user from above. And also I'm mentioning a table name, uh, name as Iris dataset managed. So these are, this is the database name and the table name which I'm creating. So now my database name and table name is ready. So, and this is just a function uh, which I'm uh, through which actually if I want to drop a table or I want to, uh, I want to drop a table, then quickly I'll call this function. So I've just predefined this function, nothing else. In case you're familiar with Python, then I think uh, this will be easy for you. This is just a simple function. So I don't want to manually type the name of my table or my manually type the name of my database. That is the reason I have done this. So I'll quickly call that function out. Now, let's create the database. So what till now what I've done is I've just fetched, I've just created the name of the database that I want to create. And where is that name? So that name is actually db underscore name. I want to create that database. So let's quickly run this command to create the database. Now I have used this command that create database if not exist. So I'm creating this database and then I am mentioning that use this database for my further operation. Use demo train and this is the parameterization that I've done. So use this database now. Now let's go ahead. Now already, I uh, if you would have watched my previous videos, I'm using Iris dataset, which is widely available over the internet. Uh, this is the test dataset. Now I'm creating the data frame out of it, and the how I'm creating data frame, everything I've mentioned in my past videos. So please, please go out and check it. So the data frame is also created from iris.csv files from this file, which is already present in my DBFS. So I'm just creating a data frame out of it. Now I have created data frame. I have my database. I have my data frame. So now what I want to do, I want to create a table out of my data frame and I want to store it. So let's do this. df.write, I'm using my data frame that I've created. I'm writing as save as table. So I'm just trying to save it as table. So I've mentioned it as iris dataset managed. Okay, so this is how you actually create a managed table from a data frame. So uh, this command ran successfully as you can see now. Uh, anyway, so iris dataset managed. So this is the table that got created and this is a managed table. Just for the reference, I've also named it as a managed table. So this is how you create a managed table because you're not providing any location. You are not telling Spark that this is the location where you have to store the metadata. Now, uh, there is one more command, describe table extended, and then you can write the table name. If you run this, so this is a SQL command, so that is for that you have to use a magic command of person SQL. Now, the moment you execute it, you will actually get information about this particular table, which I have recently created. So this table has these called column names, and now let's go down and see. Now you can see here detailed table information. So describe table extended is actually used to get the information about your table. Now you can see this is my table name and this is the database name demo train Bhavna Bedi DB. So this is the database name that I've created. This is the database that I've created dynamically. Remember that it even shows uh, the type of table. So this is what you have to Consider, so this is the managed table. So already, since we have not given any path, it has already created a managed table. Uh, and here also, you can actually see that it is a managed table. So everything gets, to, you already know that uh, a, a Spark or Databricks, you know, all the data, uh, when you talk about the data lake, everything gets stored in form of parquet format. Now let's go down and see the location here. So when you talk about this location, this is the location where, this is the default location even where, where your metadata is also stored. So you have not mentioned this location anywhere. So this location is coming by default from Databricks, from Spark. So this is the Hive location, Hive Warehouse. So this will be the default location, you can see this. 
where your metadata is stored. Now, let's go and see, let's do a select star, right? Uh, so, uh, recently we have created the table. I have also shown you describe extended table. Now, so let's see what's there inside. So I'm doing nothing, I'm just doing select star from the DB name and table name. I've already defined the database name and table name dynamically. And see, this is how the data looks like. And which is pretty much fine because I have 150 rows. It is displaying one, showing all 150 rows here. Now, let's see uh, what happens if you drop the table. Okay, now what I'm uh, doing, how I'm dropping, I'm calling the function. Okay, I'm calling the function here to drop the table. So let's drop it. So you can see the function here is now, uh, the function has been called and the table has been dropped. So now even the underlining table which I will show, see, this was the database that I created, demo train bhavna pedi underscore db. So that was the database that I created. So there is no table right now inside because I have dropped that table. So now let's go ahead. Now the table has been dropped. Now let's go ahead and create the unmanaged table and see how it gets created. I'm just mentioning the name of my table here. This is that iris data set underscore unmanaged is my database is my table name and now let's try to uh, now let's try to save it as a table now while saving it as a table i'm actually mentioning the path so that is the difference here so in the previous option i was not mentioning this part so this was default coming through spark but now let's run it i have mentioned the path that yes i want to store my uh, metadata file in this particular path and I want to save my table as this. So now, now this table is saved. Now let's display the contents of this table. So now contents of this table is like pretty much same 150 rows. Now let's go ahead and describe this table. Let's describe this table. Describe extended. As you can see here, again, uh, let me zoom in. Yeah. So now you can again see that I have all the detailed information of the table. We have a database name. So this is the database. Inside that database, this table is created. And then you can also see the type of this table. So this is an external table. So external tables are also called as unmanaged tables in case I miss telling you. So unmanaged is equivalent to external table, right? And provider is parking. Now you can see the location. So this location is different, right? So this location is DBFS and Bhavna. So this is what I mentioned. So let's now go. Uh, okay, let me show you this. I think I did not show you the same thing in the previous set. So see, demo train underscore bhavna underscore baby. So this is the table that we created. Iris data set unmanaged, right? Now let's go to this location, what we mentioned. So I have mentioned a location to keep all my metadata, right? So uh, what I'm trying to do now, I'm just trying to lead that particular location and see what all data is present in that location. So now using dbutils.fs.ls and mentioning the path here, we will actually get all the information which is present under this bar now. So you can see here what is present. So these are success files and then you have this part file, snappy.parkk. So this is the actual file where my data is also residing. Right? Now, let's go ahead and try to read this file. I'll, I'll just copy it from here. So I have copied it. I'm just trying to show the first five rows. So spark.read.park is so all those things I have actually mentioned in my previous video on Databricks. So you can definitely go ahead on YouTube. You can type cloud fitness without any space and you can actually see the videos. 
I recommend watching them previous to this. And now you can see that my file which I have, which is present in this place in this location also has the data, right? So that is why it is called as an external table. Now let's go ahead and do one thing. Now delete, now drop the table, right? I'll, I'll, I'll quickly run this function of drop table, drop table, db name and table name. Now let's go ahead and check so now you can see demo train bhavna underscore db so this table is gone now this table is nowhere present because i have to drop the table but still i can go ahead and fetch the data remember so again if i go back see this is the location where all my files are present right so let's copy this and again see whether it is whether i am able to see my data or not so i can see my data so why I can see my data because my metadata files are still present. These are not removed. So if I again go and run this command to show the files present inside the location, you can still see that the files are present. So this files will actually give me the information of both my metadata as well as the data. So it is already stored here. Now, in case I want to remove those, I can do that using dbutils itself. I can definitely make another video on dbutils. I'll try to make another video on dbutils. Uh, you can directly type this command for now, dbutils.fs.rm. So, and you can type the path here, uh, like whatever the path. Uh, so for me, it's uh, slash bhavna. So this is the path where I want to remove all the files from. So now you can see this, uh, this command ran. And now if I go back, now let's try to read the file. Now let's try to read the file here. Now you, you, you see that you got an error, that the path does not exist because I have removed those files. So this was, you know, pretty much what I wanted to cover in case of external and internal, external and man, uh, managed tables. So remember, we have two types of table. Quickly to summarize, usually we have global and the local tables. I have also mentioned this here. So we usually have global and local tables. Global tables are available across the cluster. Local tables are only accessible for that particular session and you cannot access them from other clusters. Similarly, in global tables, we have managed and unmanaged tables. Unmanaged tables are also called as external tables. Manage tables, once you delete the table, uh, the uh, underlining metadata and the data also gets deleted because it is being managed by Spark. In case of external or unmanaged tables, underlining metadata and data location is actually specified by the user and hence even if uh, the table gets dropped, the data and metadata is still present until you explicitly drop it. So this is a quick summary of what was discussed here. And thank you so much for being till here. And do remember, let me know in the comment section if you have any doubt or you feel that I should make videos on some other topics as well. Thank you so much.